Carter give you his bio. He does a lot better than me just reading to y'all. So let us welcome Captain Carter for our leading wherever you are. Texas, 
And um, he bumped into someone. They said, "Hey, Mr. Carter, Mr. Carter, I uh, I just you know bought my first car, or I just bought my first home, and I, I was able to get the loan through the bank, with, you know, following the the advice that you had given us." And it made him very very proud because he had mentored them in a way that allowed them to succeed in life and in some you know pretty difficult decision times. So. He's the one who gave me a leadership mindset. As a very young child, you can actually lead other people, right? Even as a child, and if you think about a circumstance, if you've got a whole bunch of kindergartners and the teacher's sitting there rounding up kids and trying to get them in line, right? One of those kids knows what's happening when the teacher's asking them to get in line. The rest of them may be running around like wild Indians and stuff, right? But one of them actually might realize that I can just kind of go over and stand with my hands on the side and be quiet. And magically, there's a whole bunch of them doing it, right? Because that person was a leader. He didn't have any rank, he didn't have any power, didn't have any authority, but that person recognized, that five-year-old could recognize, here's what I can do to fix this problem, right? So we all have an opportunity to lead. We all have a position in life that we have today that we can lead from. You don't have to wait for a promotion. You don't have to wait to become something that you're not today. You are a leader. You're in a position where you can lead from wherever you are. Absolutely, people just like you that are you know, volunteers, you're leading in your community. Think about the other people in your community that are watching what you do at the police department. You're leaders. Do you know why when we have a CPA, what is the purpose for the police department hosting a CPA and inviting you into their building? Anybody know? It's community outreach. We're trying to bring the community into the police department to understand what we do. Do you know why it's important for us to keep you involved as a volunteer? Well, the work you do is really important and we love it, right? That's a byproduct and it's a really big benefit for us. But the reality of that is, we have now put somebody in place who is a community leader that's being an example to the rest of our community. And why would we not want to continue that community outreach with you, right? We, we love you. You've become part of our family. And that's, you have access to our innermost secrets. We tell you about all the cases we're working and things like that. And we say, hey, don't, this isn't for public release. But we trust you because you're our people. You're a leader in your community. You know what things you can talk about and what things you can. But above all, you're leading other people to come to us and understand us as well, right? So when we have a coffee with cops, you know who shows up? It's our, you know, assistant police Kevin alumni group. That's who shows up. And they spend the whole time milling around the whole group of other citizens that do show up, talking to them, selling us, make sure everybody understands we're good people, which I hope we all are. I try to be. I always try to be. Um, so my dad, as cool as he was, and as much of a leader as he was, he spent a lot of time mentoring me, and the main thing he was trying to instill in me was that leadership mindset. And I'm pretty sure everybody in the room could put a different face on this picture, and you can think of who that person was for you. Somebody led you, right? They may or may not have had the same kind of uh, dad humor that my dad had, because the reason this picture was actually taken is he asked my mom to take it and said, I wanted all of my friends to see this picture to know that I was outstanding in my field. <laughs> and the reality was, he's outstanding in his field, right? So, it's a, uh, and truthfully, watching him behave through his entire life, he was outstanding in his field. Everything he did, he did so with a leadership mindset. He gave me something to mimic or to try to imitate and I don't imitate those things based off of trying to check a box right there's a difference between just trying to play a role and actually adopting that leadership mindset into your own brain it's an internal thought I found that throughout my life whatever I was doing wherever I was whether it was in junior high or high school or, or college or getting the first job out of college I ended up being asked to be a leader in that organization. Or, you know, they, they have a vote for some, you know, captain of the team or something like that. 
people would vote for me. And I'm like, I wasn't campaigning for that. It wasn't something I did. And it wasn't that I'm trying to get that position. That wasn't something I was shooting for. But that's the gift my dad gave me. It's a gift somebody gave all of you. You have it too, or you wouldn't be here today. Absolutely. Uh, what is a, some of the characteristics of a leadership mindset? The number one I put up there is I think probably the biggest one. We all know people who try to promote for their own personal gain. That's not a leader. It's not a leader. That's somebody that wants to be your boss. And the biggest difference between leaders and bosses is bosses are really good at telling us what to do, but they don't know how to lead us. And that is, we've all had those people. We've all been around them. The uh, thinking of the organizational success instead of their own personal success, that's a leader, right? So when, when somebody with a leadership mindset considers promotion, somebody's asking them, hey, you might want to consider for them for the sergeant's exam. You know what that does to someone with a leadership mindset? You literally sit there and start thinking, holy cow, this is going to be more work for me. Because when you're an informal leader within an organization, you don't hold a particular position, it's pretty easy to be a leader for two or three people at a time, right? The people that happen to be sitting by you that day, the people that happen to be with you in a car that day, the people that happen to be with you on a particular assignment or a particular task. Maybe you're doing a um, think our guys do uh, child ID. Maybe you're sitting at child ID at a city event with two of your uh, fellow volunteers from the organization. Pretty easy to be a leader with those two or three people. But all of a sudden, if you're hosting a dinner party for two or three people, that's not really hard, right? If you promote to a position, now that you maybe have 20 people depending on you, is it more difficult to have a dinner party for 20 people than it is for three? It's way more difficult. Because if you really have the leadership mindset, you feel obligated to treat all 20 people just as well as you would the three on that particular circumstance. Right? You're going to feel obligated to those people. So I'm, I have promoted some. I've never been the guy that wanted to pick me, pick me, pick me. I'm sitting there going, oh, man, there's going to be a whole lot to do. There's a lot to do, right? You have to, but the only people that see it wrong are the people with leadership mindset. Can you promote if you have leadership mindset? Absolutely you can. Absolutely you can. But you, you do so differently. You do so because of obligation, not because of, you know, it's got a big paycheck. If somebody's asking about a job or promotion, and the first thing they ask is how much does that pay? That's a boss. They're wanting to be your boss. They want to get the position for some personal gain. I'm not saying they shouldn't take care of your family and the pay does come into play at some point, but, but the reality is the first thing you think about should be, can I, can I provide to that many people what I need to provide to that many people? Am I the right person for that job and can I do it? We, uh, so uh, informal leadership is what many of you guys do, right? You have the ability with informal leadership, you have the ability to truly influence your organization, to truly influence the public. You can actually have influence on your police department that you're volunteered for. If you're an officer, you have an opportunity, if you have the leadership mindset, you get the respect of your peers, you have an opportunity to actually change your PD. Your chief will listen to what you have to say because they recognize the power you have. The thing you have to do, if you find yourself in that position, you have gained the honor and respect from your peers as an informal leader, always relying on a leadership mindset to make decisions. If you all of a sudden use that power to derail something and go completely against the leadership of that organization, you've used your power inappropriately, right? Some of the best leaders, remember the people? I think that was me. Um, if, you, if you think about the analogy I made with the kindergartner a while ago, if that kindergartner decided, you know what, I could stand over here in line and I could lead everybody in the right direction, but you know what, instead I'm going to see if we can all pretend like we're chickens and run over here and act like a chicken it's hard to, it's, because everybody's going to follow that person. They've been following before. If you're that informal leader, 
and you draw everything away from what the chief of your organization is doing, what the president of your organization is doing, you've used your power inappropriately because really with that power you get from having a leadership mindset, it's a great responsibility. You gotta think about what you're doing. I'm not saying you have to agree with everything that your chief says or everything that your president of the organization says, but there's a right way and wrong way in every circumstance to disagree. And you can, you can disagree, but it probably shouldn't be in front of a group of 400 people, right? It shouldn't be in front of a group of 10 people. It should be a one-on-one, -on -one, let them know. They will respect you for whatever your opinion is, but they also have to look, because they're the ones having the dinner party for 50 people or 100 people or 200 people, however big the organization is, and they're trying to do the most good with the decision that they make. So think about that. And like I said, it's like Spider-Man said, with that great power comes great responsibility. Um, look around the room, think about everybody at the table you're sitting at. Think about how that person's leading in their life right now. Think about how that person across the table might be influencing you this week. We've had a great time this week. I love this. This is like a recharge your batteries week for Casey. I always thought this is my 12th year to come to this. I love it. Y'all are all my family. Most of y'all know me because I do spend a lot of time in the hospitality this week. I'm, I'm sorry. Um, it is a lot of fun. And if I haven't talked to you or got to meet you individually, if you're one of the new folks, or even if you've been here for a while or to several different years and I haven't had a chance to visit you personally, Please grab me before we're gone today. I would love to sit down and visit with you because everybody here has something to contribute. This is a wonderful group of people. Y'all are like family to me. And it's really because we're all like-minded people. Y'all think the same way I do. Y'all are leadership-minded people. And you can tell by the fact that you're here, right? You wouldn't have driven as far as you've driven to get here and spend the time with us if you didn't. You're gonna go back to your agency and you're gonna tell a bunch of people you didn't get to do what I did. Oh my gosh, you should have seen all those neat people we hung out with, right? And we had some really neat presenters. I literally was sitting in several of the classes and I was thinking about, how, I don't write, clearly I don't write down my speech or whatever what I'm gonna talk about, it just kind of flows. Um, and I didn't drink a beer and a half for it to make sure it didn't flow. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, sitting in several of the uh, classes this week, I'm hearing some pieces of my speech that I had planned in my head. I'm like, they're gonna think I'm a plagiarizer. But <laughs> the reality is we're like-minded people. We see things the same way and we all know how to lead from where we are. That's what makes us similar. We're here and it's what makes it fun to talk to one another, right? Um, think about who it was. Somebody was outstanding in their field, right? that made you take note and made you be how you are. Just think about that for a minute. Who is that person to you? And are they here, right? They might be, honestly, they might be. Um, put them in that field. You can put them over my chunky dad. Uh, put, put that picture out in that field and, and, and understand that they're outstanding in their field and they might would appreciate hearing that from you at some point, right? Um, as far as we talked a little bit about formal leadership, most of what we do is informal leadership. We've all agreed that you can promote. If you're an informal leader with a leadership mindset, you can promote and you can be very effective as a leader. That's actually the best kind of leader, is one that has a leadership mindset, that isn't climbing the ladder for their own personal gain. That's the best leader we'll ever have at an executive level. Um, but there are some downfalls to formal leadership for somebody like us that has a leadership mindset. I list them here. The, the first one is you'll, you are going to have to make decisions that negatively affect people that you care about. You're going to have to make decisions that affect the people that you care about in a negative way, right? Because you're having to make decisions for a group, not for one person, not for 10 people. You're gonna have to make decisions for a group. That is something that probably doesn't bother the boss. They really don't care because they don't think about people like we do. 
So this is something that affects people with a leadership mindset. So if you accept a position of leadership within your organization, within your PD, prepare yourself because this is going to happen and it will bother you. You'll have a hard time sleeping at night because you're like, God. And you can't make decisions that are great for everybody. It just it doesn't work that way, right? Number two, you will be disliked by some, even though you have tried your best to make a decision that has the most positive outcomes for the group, right? There's somebody who's not gonna like what you did. And you may have the best intentions, you may be trying to do everything you can with the information you have, somebody is not gonna like you. It's impossible to make everyone like you. Number three, you will be misunderstood and you won't always have the ability to clear that up with everybody, right? You won't always be able to explain why you made the decision you made. That's going to happen. It doesn't bother the boss, but it does bother people like us because we think of the people first. We're selfless. Every decision you make, if you start it with the right mindset, it's a selfless decision. It has a mentorship role for somebody else you don't think of how's this going to be best for me. You know, you think of other people first. That makes these, all these three things will hurt you in your heart a little bit because it's just going to happen and there's no way to get around it. So if you're brave enough to take on a formal leadership role, whether it's within your organization or in your police department, understand this is going to happen to you. But also understand there's at least, what, 376 people in this room? that really want somebody like you to take that leadership role because you've got the right mindset. And it helps us knowing that it does hurt you when making those decisions because you care, right? If you didn't care, you'd be flipping about it. But you do care. Um, I have uh, a good... Is it me? Okay, okay. Can you not hear me? Can you hear me now? Okay. Uh, my hands are still being like Ricky Bobby. Okay. Um, I have three challenges for you here. First one is. Adopt a leadership mindset if you haven't already. I think everybody here has. But make sure that your mindset, not just you checking a box or playing a role. Some people want to just play the role of a leader, and sometimes their example that they're using wasn't a very good leader, and they don't do a very good job because of that. But if it's in here, if you have the right mindset, it's so easy to make the right decisions for your people because you're thinking about the right things. The priorities are correct in your head. Adopt a leadership mindset. Someone is watching, you just don't know who they are. Always remember that leadership is a way of thinking. It is not a role. It's a way of thinking. You think that way already, or you would not be sitting here. Trust those thoughts, follow those thoughts when you're making decisions, especially when it affects other people because that's gonna, it's gonna lead you in the right direction. Whatever you do, whatever position you are in life, if you're 20, if you're 92, leave from where you are because somebody's watching you and there's a good chance that you are outstanding in your field according to somebody else. You may not see yourself that way, but somebody does. I promise you. I promise you. Okay. Here's the deal. Here's the deal. If you have been in the hospitality suite this week, you might know this. This is one of my favorite singers. I'm kind of dressed this way on purpose. And uh, there's a lot of karaoke that goes on in the hospitality suite. So I'm a little nervous about it. I'm a little nervous about performing in front of the 45 people that are going to be up there. So I figured maybe I could do it here as a practice. And Maybe, and I tried like everything to get the music on there, so I might have to do it a cappella. So y'all, please, if it's bad, 
y'all have vegetables on your table that you can throw at me? And then I'll call it done. Okay? All right. Well, excuse me, but I think you got my chair. Woo! No, that one's not taken, I don't mind. If you sit here, I'll be glad to share. Yeah, it's usually packed here on Wednesday night. Woo oh, if you don't mind, could I talk you out of a lie? Oh, thank you. Can I drink you a bite? Oh, listen to me. What I mean is, can I buy you a drink? Anything you please. Oh, you're welcome. I don't want to mess it up. I need to stop. I need to stop. All right. If I'm going to embarrass myself in front of 376 people, I expect to see 375 other people embarrassing themselves on the 10th floor after we finish all this. So I am looking forward to seeing everybody. If I have not visited with you, I look forward to doing so. And I look forward to seeing you every year because I'm telling you, you will notice the same faces you want to see. And this entire week has been just a big reunion, right? And so if you're new here, don't make it be your last. Please make it be that your first of many. I've been coming 12 years and I thoroughly enjoy it. Thank you guys. That's awesome.